Hello, Mark. How are you? Hey, Richard. Great. How Glad are you today? Here. Uh, so, what do you think of Net Zero? Oh, I think it's awesome. A lot of people are probably just trying to save money on their utility bill. Absolutely. That's what we normally see is just customers going after savings. Right. So, where do you start with on the process here? Well, typically we would start with somebody's utility bill, figure out what their consumption looks like, what their rate tiers look like with the utility company. However, here with Don, with the new construction, he actually had computed what he thinks his consumption is going to be. The heating and the air conditioning, the electrical lighting and everything else. Absolutely. Right. And how much he's going to need during the winter versus the summer. Right. All those to create a profile of consumption. Okay. So how do you size the system? Well, then once we've got that figured out, then we start looking at the sun, trying to figure out what kind of sun hours we're going to get throughout the year. All right. So the sun's up in the sky most days, what, eight hours a day, but we don't get all of it, right? Exactly. And here in New England, we've done the analysis. We think we're going to get about 1,016 sun hours this year uh, here at this location. 1,000 hours hitting onto our solar panels. Absolutely. Producing energy. And how would that compare with some place like in the American Southwest? You know, so like in Arizona or California, you might be looking at 1,600 for a very uh -huh. similar size roof that's and a, similar access. That's a big difference. Absolutely. Are there any particular issues in siting it here? Well, clearly we have to worry about the trees and the shading that they're going to create. Right. The sun is real high above our heads. Yeah. And as you think about it, in the winter, it's going to be much lower across the horizon. So we've even got to be worried and concerned about what these trees are going to do for our shade. Right. But those trees will drop their leaves, so it'll still give you solar contribution. Absolutely. Absolutely. So now, and this building is exactly south right here? It is. And it's also got a great pitch for us. So we really like the angle to be like this for the summer and more like this for the winter. So this roof's been cheated a little bit because we want to make sure we have plenty for the heating load. Absolutely. Right. You know, and we could do the east as well. You can see we've got great solar uh, visibility today up there. But in the late afternoon, we're going to lose that. That's right. And same with the west. We're going to lose it in the morning and capture it in the afternoon. All right. So our panels are going here. How many are there? We're going to put 18 up there. All right. And let me show you a standard one. Okay. So this is a standard photovoltaic panel. Basically consists of a whole bunch of solar cells that are silicon stradiated with wires that go through these things. When the sun comes down and beams on this, it's going to excite the electrons, produce about 300 watts of DC power. So 300 watts, what can that do for us in a typical house like this? So 300 watts is probably enough to, to basically light up your living room. Okay, so one room, but we've got 18 of these up on the room. We do, we have 18. So really we're going to be able to produce about 5.6 kilowatts of power during the day. All right, so they're going to be up in a string up on the roof? Yeah, what we've done is we've designed the system with two strings. So basically, if you think of the old days of Christmas tree lights where one light went out, you lost the whole string. Yep. No, we've, we've gone past that. Basically, these are going to be connected, whereas if one goes out, the rest of them are still producing cool. for us. All right, so the sun's going to hit this, excited, it's going to turn it into DC, direct current. We're right? making it as DC. It comes into the building, now we have to invert it to alternating current, so we've seen that kind of stuff before, right? This is what we use in a car to go into a battery, which is going to give us 12 volts DC and turn it into 110 volts. Your inverter is just a bigger version of that, right? Absolutely. This is a residential inverter. Basically, it's going to take all that power that we produce in DC. We're going to come through this inverter. It's going to power the house. We're going to connect this to your panel, your electric panel in right. the house. Basically, anything you need is going to come right through this as long as it's producing, right. as long as the sun's out. But the key to your system really is that with 18 of these things, we're going to make more electricity than the house could actually use in a given hour. So we're going to actually send power backwards and spin the meter backwards, right? Absolutely. So that power, that excess power is going to go back on the grid. It's what they call net metering. And basically it is. It's going to turn the meter backwards. Yeah. Then during the winter months, you're going to be turning them, you're probably be pulling some power from the grid, right. basically taking that meter forwards. The goal at the end of the year is that that meter is back where it started at the beginning of the year. Now, another variable is actually how people actually use electricity, right? How Don and his family will leave the lights on or not. Absolutely. That, okay. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project. So be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.